Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Bill Wyatt. I'm a general dentist, but I've been practicing nothing but orthodontics since 1970. Uh, I'm a member of the American Orthodontic Society. This is a this is an organization of general and pediatric dentists whose sole purpose is to teach orthodontics to general and pediatric dentists. We have a wonderful organization. We have a board certification. We also have a journal and a, it's a well organized organization. And I'm going to suggest if you do orthodontics at all, that you really should get in the American Orthodontic Society. Uh, you'll need them. And we do a lot of things for people. We have a very good journal. We have a group of dentists that know their stuff on orthodontics, and they teach you from the ground up. Uh, we primarily try to teach you basic, very to do simple cases at first, but you can go into just as deep into orthodontics as you're willing to go. You have to study some. You're not going to learn it in a few weekends that some people uh, act like that's what we uh, do, but that's not. Uh, if you pass the board's in the American Orthodontic Society, you know, I'll guarantee you, you'll know how to do orthodontics. Now, I've been in it for a long time, uh, way before I started doing nothing but orthodontics, and I'm board certified in this organization, and I teach orthodontics, and have been teaching it for years, and I'm getting where I can't get around and uh, teach as much, so I'm putting this on the uh, internet, YouTube, and different things so that people can uh, actually go and learn it there. So this today I'm going to try to cover a thing that's been maybe a little controversial, but it works really well, and I want to show you some cases and some long-term stuff. Now, a lot of people are missing their lateral teeth, uppers and lowers sometimes. Sometimes just one and have a deformed one on the other side or something of that nature. You can take cuspid teeth and shape them to where they look pretty much like lateral. They'll just look like a hefty lateral, but they can look very good. Sometimes the shade of the cuspid is a little bit uh, darker than the uh, central teeth, but not very, not too often. So I'm going to show you a group of cases how we've done that. Uh, so we'll start off here. Uh, I'll need to move this over and get my little uh, dot going here, and I draw on these pictures and try to illustrate things, but I think that'll be the best way to understand it. Uh, this case, this first case, was uh, done quite a while back, and she had upper laterals missing, or maybe one was deformed or something, and we would take it out. And so we could, ex she had a full enough profile to where we could uh, move the cuspids right up by the centrals and shape them up like laterals. I'll try to, when I get over in some of these cases, kind of show you how we shape them. Uh, and they really look quite like lateral teeth. Now, the ones on this young lady are just a little bit, have a little yellow shade to them, which is not detracting too much, but we shape them up to where they really look like lateral teeth. And we'll go through and show you these. Now here's the young lady's models. This was 1975 when we uh, took these models. 
she's pretty good uh, class one case no big orthodontic problems in here but she was full enough to where we could sacrifice those and usually we come down and take something on the bottom so that we keep a, a molar relationship in here class one you see and uh if we are missing a tooth up in here we sometimes come down and take a first buy on the bottom or maybe there's some other tooth missing where we might uh, use that so uh, from the other side of the mouth the same way as nearly class one not totally class one so we'll see what we have when we get through the lower anterior teeth look pretty well lined up uh, no problem there these are this some individual pictures of the upper and there was a little kind of deformed lateral on this side absolutely nothing this is your central right here this is your cuspid coming in and there's absolutely nothing there so we'll bring this cuspid on down in here then we shape it up now in your shaping you take you trim the cuspid in five different areas you take a little off of the mesial excuse me we have to go back to that you take a little off of the mesial of the cuspid some off the incisal some off the distal and you have to go under when you shorten this tip it gets broader back here so you have to trim the lingual side of the cuspid and then you get on the labial where the cuspid kind of makes a hump like this then you smooth this off to some extent and not as much as a lateral so so that the tooth like it where you trim it it will be kind of uh, thicker back here so in order to for the tooth to slide over the lower anterior you have to trim this out in this area right in here right at first to kind of leave a little shelf for it I'll show you some more about that later on now here is the panorex that we took 19 3 of 75 after we had finished the case now you can look at this and actually the on the bottom now we put the panorex together where you can see where the motor relationship and everything is this is not part of it this comes together this is a the central this is the lateral and this is a cuspid and this is the second bicuspid right here so we've we've sacrificed the first bicuspid we still have the wisdom teeth back here to fill in they'll come in and put some kind of pressure on this we hope her jaw will be big enough when they come in so she can get her wisdom teeth into place so we've got all the wisdom teeth to come in but this lines up quite good and just kind of some hefty looking laterals but they don't look bad at all it's better than having bridges or implants or anything else put in in the, the situation now if you need to when the, the wisdom teeth come in if she's getting too full or open vertical uh, too much you could come back take these out but let's keep them for the time being now this is the way it looks I'll admit the cuspids in this particular case have a slighter yellower tint there's more denting up close to the surface you can bleach these too and get them more like the central she never was uh, worried about that space and it looks good and it holds up and I've had many of these people I'm going to show you one in a minute uh, 32 years after we did this now that's class one that's a good treated case which can hold up all this young lady's life and we put retention on it and hold it that way and this works 
uh, on this case, of course, we took out the the bicuspids in there to give us space to match up the upper and lower arch. And uh, this is the lower arch where we remove the uh, first bicuspids in this case. And here's this young lady again. Now the second case I want to show you. <coughs> Well, this is one that's lasted a long time. Uh, this lady had both of her uh, upper and lower laterals. I think there was one uh, deformed one or something where we took all the remaining laterals out and we used cuspids in both the upper and the lower arch. And uh, she... Uh, we watched her. We started this when she was quite young, but she came back uh, 33 years later. She was out, of, lived out of town, but she came back into town and came back in the office. And I was tickled to death to see her, especially because it really looked good. Now here this lady is. She's 30-something years old, and. Uh, this is what we started with, and she was age six when we started. This was 1973, August the 15th, 1973, and she was six years old at this point, uh, and she was kind of late getting her teeth in the mouth at that point. You can see the upper centrals are still up here, and so she's got to lose a lot of baby teeth. But we knew early on, you know, this lateral is missing right here. This is a little tiny peg lateral in this area, so we planned to take it out. My panorex doesn't show the bottom as good, but she was missing the laterals or had some little deformed areas. And sometimes we'll take one good lateral on one side because putting a cuspid next to a much smaller lateral tooth, especially up in the upper arch, it doesn't look good. So we sometimes take a perfectly good lateral on one side and then put the cuspid in there if we can take the teeth out. Now if it's dished in, we will fill it in or put you know, now you can put implants and things like that, but in 1973, uh, there wasn't very much in the way of implants going on. Uh, now, here on the lower arch, we were missing one on this side right here, but we had a relatively good one over here. So we took this out, and we took this out right here. And now we'll take this cuspid and bring it up in here. This one will come up in here. This one comes down. This one will come in here. Now this is 1974 right here, I think. And uh, we'll go through that. <coughs> now here it is. A little later, we didn't take these out at that time. We didn't start the case for some time after that. As this got closer to the surface, and we we were just watching this case go and kind of just figuring out the diagnosis way back down the line while she was quite young. So there's nothing here. This will go in here. We take this out. This will come down here. Nothing here. So this cusp will be brought right up in there, in that space. And we'll have the, the first by and the second by cusp in here. Uh, they'll come on in this part. Up here, we took out this lateral, which was fairly good. But to make it look good, and we had uh, six-year molars, second molars, and we see wisdom teeth forming. I can't see that one on this peer, uh, picture, but it's uh, the wisdom teeth are there. 
Okay, now here is the Panorex, and uh, and her she was 13 years, seven months at this point. We still haven't done anything except just remove teeth on the case, and it's coming along quite good. And this is 1913. This is 1980. So this is several years. And we start the orthodontics at this point. So we've been watching this girl since she was six years old and had planned the diagnosis way back there. And now she's uh, age 13, seven, about 13 and a half. She's pretty well grown at this time. And it's 1980. And so we're going to start the orthodontics now and go ahead and finish it up. There's really not a whole lot to do to it at this point, you see. Now we do have to come in and shape these teeth. And you try shaping them up really good and you can make them look so much like laterals so you just can hardly tell the difference in them if you're there. If both laterals are actually cuspids, they look good. You don't draw your attention. But if you've got a small, regular lateral over here and a pretty hefty cuspid lateral over here, they draw attention to that. So sometimes we do like we did here. We sacrifice, we sacrifice a fairly good lateral to make the thing look good as long as we've got teeth to fill in and line it up like that. Now, let's see, I don't know whether I've got it. Well, here's another panorex, and you can see all four wisdom teeth are in here now. Now, these don't look like they've got room on the bottom at this point. Now, she's 16 and 8 years old. Now, we have completed this case. You see, we've shaped the cuspids up, but they're still pretty wide. They're still... Uh, look like a hefty lateral, but you flatten them out on the label. And this is after her orthodontics, and this is 1973. Uh, so uh, that is what the thing looked like. That's 1983. Now she came into the office much later. And this is 10 of 83. I don't know. But we had decided there's no hope for getting these wisdom teeth in. So we're planning to extract those. She definitely won't grow anymore at 17 right here. And then this jaw is turning up. There's, so there's really no room, no possibility of these wisdom teeth to come in. So we had somebody, uh, or dentist or somebody, took the wisdom teeth out. Let me see if I've got another. Uh, that's the picture of the one lateral, I think, that we had to sacrifice in there. Now, here is her uh, cephalometrics in 1988. And she's 13, 7. We're going to start the, I think we started somewhere there. Now, here she's age 39 right now, and she came back in, that's I think 06, when she came in, and it's 1939. Now these teeth have been in her mouth. I shot this same kind of panorex, and we've got a central, a cuspid, first by, second by, first molar, second molar. There was no room for the wisdom teeth, so we sacrificed the wisdom teeth. And she, of course, had no laterals, but we didn't take anything else out in here, so there's no laterals down on the bottom. The laterals are gone. Well, it was there. And these, these are cuspids all the way around in her mouth now so this is since 19 
She's 39 years old. So we started watching this young lady when she was six years old. So we've been watching her for 33 years. Uh, and uh, she came back in. I don't know. I think she moved up north somewhere. But she came back in to see us. And, man, I got her in the chair when I saw her come in. She said, thank us. And uh, we'll show you what she looks like. This is a patient after 33 years. This is a wear teeth look. And they're solid as a rock. And uh, she wore a retainer for a while, I'm sure. But she hadn't had a retainer in for years and years. And this is the way the teeth look. Now, I don't mind recommending this to anybody. Now, California, some places, they think this is bad news to take cuspids and use them for laterals. Uh, that is a bunch of junk. I mean, those cuspids will last that lady if she lives to be 120 they'll still be there and that looks doggone good so anyway i think this is a very good thing to do in many cases where laterals are missing like that now uh, the appearance of this these cuspids don't have any shade uh, difference hardly at all I, I can't detect it never bothered her one bit and she's got a beautiful set of teeth and uh, I was just so proud of her when she came in. Now I'm going to add a little bit on the way we shape these things. Now this is the upper looking down on the upper. You have to kind of trim out a little on the lingual because the upper teeth have to miss the lower. If you left this uh, thick here this would hit the lateral on the bottom and stop so you want it to go past so you got some overjet and overbite so the teeth up here won't interfere with the your overjet and overbite uh, in here so you have to trim them a little bit on the lingual side and then we took a little off the meson a little off the distal some off the tip and then trim the lingual and then trim a little bit of the label and polish it up and they just look like laterals now you need to be a little artistic in doing that and i think most dentists can do that and just shape those cuspids up uh, in this case well, that pulls it up just a little bit closer. I think I've got some pictures where the bottom teeth now, you trim them off. It's not necessary to come in here and trim that, but most of the time we do so that you, in looking down in the mouth where you see the teeth, this looks better if you trim them up on the lingual, but it doesn't have to be the upper really does because that part will hit here and stop the uh, jaw from closing too and you won't have your over jet over jet and over by it like you normally would so i think this is something that everybody does that does orthodontics should know how to do this now i'm going to bite the teeth together and stick a mirror in her mouth so you can see now this is the lower teeth right here. And this is a mirror in her mouth here. And so you're looking down on the lower teeth from this angle. If you're not used to these, you wonder what in the world that, how that picture, but that's nothing but the lower teeth where you put a mirror in there like that. Now, <coughs> the upper teeth, if you stick a mirror right in, uh, above, uh, well, actually, I put them down the lower lip, and uh, these are the upper teeth now coming in over the lower teeth. Now, if your cuspids are real thick 
right in this area. See, it would hit earlier right here than it should. So you've got to trim the lingual of the teeth also. And there's a lot of, a lot in orthodontics that you need to be a little artistic in trimming these teeth up uh, naturally. It does look better. Now, she's not protrusive at all, but she is a straight facial profile. But this is a solid position for her. Her tongue presses out, and her lips hold the teeth in. Her cheeks hold them in, and the tongue keeps them up against it. And don't uh, forget what the tongue can do to the teeth. The tongue can move them all over the place. And if you don't have a tongue, <laughs> you're in a mess. I had a 70, I mean a 60, no, she was 72 years old. Lady came in and her teeth were all crumpled into her mouth. And she told me she had beautiful straight teeth when she was uh, 60 eight years old and she had cancer of the tongue and they removed her whole tongue and her teeth just really folded in so you've got to have the tongue pressure and all these pressures are equal and that stays like that now that's a, a wonderful the vertical heights of the face is almost ideal in this particular case and she's got a good smile line and a very nice looking lady and she has beautiful teeth and that's really good i'm going to run through one more here it's nothing but x-rays and i'll show you the thing with just a group of x-rays now this young well i don't even know whether it's a a man or a woman really or a girl or a boy here we did this slashing technique now we've got a bunch of stuff on that uh, and we shave these teeth down made room for them where the four anteriors would come in and then this would have room and we trim this down where the bicuspid came in there and then we had room enough for this bicuspid to come up uh, you can see that stuff on the shaving the teeth down if you go uh, it's just uh, uh, there's a whole video on this whole thing see now here we're missing a tooth there we've got a lateral over on this side and we get everything in here i'm going to go through their whole x-ray this i think we may have 10 panorexes on this and here's number two. This cuspid's coming in right here. Here's this cuspid headed in. We've taken this down and this down over here with the pulp otomies. We did a ectopically erupting. We put a separator in there to push this tooth back. And you start working on these kids real early sometimes before you uh, really get into your orthodontics on them. However, this is orthodontics, and it's good orthodontics. So there's nothing on this side. We've got a cusp uh, lateral over here, and we're coming in this area. This cusp is coming in. That deciduous one will be gone. So we're going to have to put these three teeth here in this space between here and here. So you're going to have to do some expansion to get that in there. But let's see what we did. I don't remember exactly uh, what we did. It's been a long time ago since I did that. All right, the cuspids are coming in pretty good down here. And we've got this lateral is not there. So this cuspid is coming down quicker than this one over here. And we'll have to do something. We either got to push it back or we'll have to... Uh, do something in this area. So here's number five. So at this point, we're planning to, this 12-year molar doesn't have room to come in. And so we come back on this case. I'm sorry, we uh, took this permanent lateral. I forgot about it. And we came in and took 
at least I've got it marked on the pan right here. We took the second bicuspids out. Now you don't get much backing up of the anterior if you take the second bias in doing this. This is something you you just don't get all this from cephalometric training and stuff. But you see how they work out and after a period of time you just can look at the case and tell what you need to do. It takes a few years though before you can do that. Now let's see what excuse me, I think we went two X rays. Okay, here's what we did. We took this out here. This cuspid has come down now, so we want to move it over in this space. We took the bicuspid here and here. These molars will come forward, and then this can go this way, but if it doesn't, there's a good video on how to upright them. We can upright anything. It can be laying flat down in here, and you can set it up, so don't run from us. <laughs> Tilted molar or, or bicuspid one. We've got some good stuff on that, and I'll show you how to uh, upright them. Now uh, that's like that, and we still haven't done anything. Now we just uh, taken out these, preparing for doing this. Now here's the seventh X-ray. You see this cuspid has moved in, and it's moving over. This one's coming on down. This one's coming up in here. This come, this space is closing up. And in this here, without anything in there now. Now this cuspid is, this molar back here, instead of uprighting, looks like it's going to lay down. But we'll show you how to, don't get afraid of them when they lay down. You can upright any darn thing in there, as long as they're living and breathing. Uh, so don't, uh, just learn how to do it. And there's some videos in here that will show you how to do it. All right, so we put a little arch wire, straighten that out. Bringing this in, we'll just have something in here. We've started the orthodontics now. But this one looks like it's insisting on coming on down. It can't seem to make. Sometimes you can put a separator in, something like that, and push it back a little bit, and it'll straighten up on its own. But don't worry about it. If it doesn't, we know how to do it. You know how to do it. Now, let's see the next picture. I don't know. We did a bunch of jump. We jumped a long way in here between 8 and 9 x-ray. Uh, so, at this point, we've got all the molars in place uh, except these upper molars. Now, they've got to come down in here and we'll wearing something to hold this open and we're letting the uh, cuspids come on in to that area. Let's see what uh, happens here in the next number 10. Now the cuspids have moved all the way over here. Now we know how to put tip and T so we'll try to bring these roots back or at least I sure hope I did. I know how to do it, and we would do that. Brought this down so this can come on in. Now, let's go to another x ray, number 11. And we got the cuspids lined up, the molars are coming in. We see no hope for the wisdom teeth, so we recommend the removal of them at that point. Again, same thing taking place here. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I had to cough, and it's still, still time. I tried to push the pause button, but it didn't, it didn't go. I think I have to come up here and click the blooming thing. Sorry for that interference, but we're back. So at this point, we we have to take out these wisdom teeth. The 12-year molars are 
delayed in coming in. They don't seem to want to move on down. So we come in when they take out these wisdom teeth, whoever the old surgeon, we had them take the cap of tissue off of these 12 hair molars to give them very little resistance. Now they haven't grown any roots to speak of at this point. You're taking a little risk there to get them in. So we take the wisdom teeth and uncover these 12 year molars. And let's see what happens if we surely have a number 13 extra. Or if the wisdom teeth are gone, the 12 year molars pop right in like that. And so we more or less finish the case up and get them out. And this 12 year molar will continue to come down and come in contact with this molar here. This is not going to. The second mole on the bottom is not going to over erupt because it's contacting right here. We've been a real kind of a super class one relation with that at this point. Uh, let's see, this is, she's 17 and 10. So she's pretty old uh, getting the treasure molar in at that point. And still not all the way, but they should continue on down and come on in the mouth. Uh, and that's the end of that part. And I'm going to pause again here and go to another case that's further down the line. All right, I'm going to go to case number five. We skipped over four. I'm going to go back and cover it in another uh, thing. And uh, this started in 93 and finished it in 95. And I saw her back in 06. So let's see what uh, goes on here. Uh, this lady has a good profile, good facial structure. Looks a little bit like the one earlier back there, but it's a different person. Uh, and here are the cuspids. You can see them where we've trimmed them down there. So I'll show you some of the x-rays going into the case. And uh, she's got uh, deciduous teeth that we have to remove and we have to get these cuspids that will come in beside the upper centrals. And that's the first x-ray. Here's the second x-ray. And this is showing you where we trim those teeth up. You know, we did the five areas now here. Mesial, distal, incisal, trim the lingual back up in here, and then a little on the labia. You got to flatten it out a little bit to make it look like a lateral. Uh, so she's missing these lateral teeth right in here. And here we're taking the first bicuspids so that it matches up so that we'll end up with a class one relation all the way back. Uh, you may not want to do that, but I, I really prefer to do that rather than uh, come in and spread them out and put the teeth in there. So you end up with nothing but your permanent, your own teeth in your mouth. And this is 93. This is where we finished up on her. There's very, uh, the starting of it. Here's the way her models were when we actually started this. And, and uh, so here's where we finished up. And it looks doggone nice, really. And we've got cuspids that are like in place of laterals. The shade, the color look very much the same. That first case, the young lady had uh, cuspids that were a little darker than her centrals, but this isn't, and this is the way this case showed in 93, and that's the side there. Uh, up above, you can see the way it's lined up. This is just another case. I, I want you to feel comfortable doing this. It, it works good. Now, a certain place in California, they think you uh, terrible to do that but that's ridiculous 
uh, even Baylor here, the the Baylor Orthodox Department, they agree with that. That's one thing we agree on. <laughs> I've always been squabbling with them for years, but we do agree on this. And uh, down on the bottom, we put our bonded three to three down there to hold that in place. But we took out uh, by cuspid, you see, down on the bottom to make it match up. And this is what we get with that. So I don't hesitate to tell you, uh, go ahead and do this. This is a good thing. Now we had a deep bite on this case. We lowered that down and we've got ways of opening anybody's bite if you need to. If you learn how to use these intruding wires, they're the best thing going for opening bites and use blocks along with them. And that ends all of this stuff on uh, cuspids for laterals. And I hope you well, if you aren't used to doing this, try it. Get some, uh, if you need to get some cuspids you've removed and trim them up, uh, just uh, teeth and trim them and learn how to do it. It's, it is not difficult to make them really look good. I'll go back here and show those teeth. I mean, if I, if you just looked at this patient right quick, it wouldn't be very t very many dentists would just immediately say, well, my George, you got cuspids, you don't have any lateral teeth in here. They, they wouldn't re really recognize that. Uh, so just trim some teeth that have been extracted if you're uh, concerned about being able to trim them up good. And some people are not uh, artistic enough to really do this but it it is not a difficult thing to do so i hope you'll be able to do that and uh, uh anyway this is it and i want to help as many people anywhere in the world wherever you are you can get on youtube and pull this stuff up and you can pick it up the first time you look at it you can run it back and forth to you blue in the face until you can see exactly what we do. I'm not trying to hide anything from anybody. And I think general dentists, pedodontists, and even periodontists and other people do some orthodontics. You need to know what can be done before you can diagnose the case right. And uh, that just burns me up that, that we haven't spread orthodontic knowledge to every dentist. There'd be more orthodontics to do than people could do if they did. And that's been what I've tried to get across for years, but it had just hadn't got there yet. But we're well on the way. We have a wonderful organization. And if you want to learn orthodontics now, you can darn sure do it. We have a bunch of very sharp teachers that come in and teach, and we have a good organization to be in. So I hope you will uh, take advantage of that if you're out here doing orthodontics. I don't care for any crappy mess, and I don't want to have anything to do with somebody that's just in there to make money out of it and just does a bunch of junk. I don't want to help him at all. Uh, well, I'd like to uh, kick him, <laughs> really. I don't want junky orthodontics. You can do good stuff, and I think we ought to do it, or at least present it to people where they can do it. So I'm going to shut up now, and we'll end this uh, deal. And it can be done, so I hope that you'll... Uh, do that. We'll stop it now.